Hi, it's Chris. Welcome to my video, my tutorial here. We're going to have a great time. We're going to actually cover this gorgeous painting, these two compositions. We're going to show you how you can just do some simple mixes, limited palette, really, just, you know, three or four or five colors. And you can create both of these uh, wonderful paintings. We're showing you the Fabriano paper. So um, in the beginning of the video, I'm going to show you this is the Fabriano uh, pad. You can see this online if you research uh, Fabriano Artistico paper. You'll see this pad. It's got purple uh, color on the cover. And um, this is Fabriano 300 gram, 140 pound paper, extra white, Artistico by Fabriano. Beautiful paper. I use this all the time. It's my go-to paper. Um, it's just handles beautifully. Um, I can do any type of painting with it, no matter what the style of painting I do. Landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes, portrait paintings, whatever I do. It's going to perform beautifully and I can get all the effects I really need to with this paper. Um, and I also use a lot of other papers I'm going to talk about in the future on my channel. So this is just like my first kind of um, coverage of some of the paper that I'm using. And I'll cover more uh, papers that I use in the very, very near future. So look for those videos. And if you subscribe below on the right hand side, uh, you click that subscribe button. All it's going to do is just alert you the next time you open up YouTube that I've made a new video. And then this way you can kind of see as I make a few more videos and eventually I'm going to get to some more papers that I use. But for right now, I'm going to cover that Fabriano Artistico paper. And uh, we're doing a tree, you know, a couple of trees, beautiful trees here uh, with some grass. And then we're going to do some ocean, uh, some beautiful seascape, ocean with some sand and a beautiful sky. So you can see these both here. I'm going to paint both of these compositions in this tutorial. So uh, let's get prepped. Let's grab our brushes, our paints, our paper. Hopefully you can grab some Fabriano paper and uh, work along with me. We're going to have a great time. This is really so much fun doing the trees. We're going to show you some different techniques on how to get some beautiful looking trees going. And then of course we're going to do some gorgeous seascape with some uh, crashing waves and uh, beautiful white uh, foam coming in on the waves as it comes into the shore and the sand, the beautiful warm sand of the golden raw sienna and uh, uh, yellow ochre. And then we have our sky, which is our basically same colors we use for our ocean up here. We do a beautiful sky wash at the end when everything else dries, we do our sky wash. You'll see everything here as we do it. And um, okay, so we'll get started in just a second. Okay, let's get uh, started here. We just saw the finished uh, compositions that we did, trying out different papers. So um, if you're uh, kind of new to watercolor, you're going to really appreciate this video. We're actually uh, going to cover some different style papers, what they can do, kind of the different effects you can get with different uh, watercolor papers. Um, so uh, we'll start out and um, the first paper I'll use here is the Fabriano Extra White um, rough paper and uh, this is what it looks like if you were to look online and you would see the the art uh, Fabriano Artistico. It comes in pads. You can buy it in full sheets without uh, it coming in a pad. You could buy it full sheets or you can get the pad but this is the pad and this is what it looks like. It's kind of got like a purplish blue cover and uh, you'll see it 300 gram 140 pounds extra white is the color or you know it's uh, some uh, artistical paper has uh, like a little bit of a uh, antique tone to it, like a little bit of a golden uh, tone. So the extra white's really bright, kind of like a bright white uh, paper, which is what I use, the extra white. So it's Artistico extra white, and it's 300, uh, 300 gram, 140 pounds. And uh, this is what I use, like this is my main paper that I use uh, for, for pretty much all my paintings. But I do use other papers, so uh, it just depends on this. Really, I change my papers a lot of times according to what subject matter I'm painting. So Artistico, for me, this is your all-purpose paper. You can use this for all your paintings. This is what I use for, for myself. I'm just speaking on my own behalf. I really don't have any um, agreements or anything like that, or I'm not making any money from any of the papers that I'm kind of covering here. I'm just kind of showing you some of the papers that I use and why I use them and how we'll look at some of the... Um, ways they perform uh, in watercolor. So the Artistico, my extra white Artistico paper that I use, I buy full sheets, so, and occasionally I'll buy padded too. I'll buy the pads of Artistico. 
And um, so this would be like for doing like gallery paintings, paintings for people that might hire me to create um, paintings uh, for um, for their own private, you know, uh, office space or for their home. I'll use this for pretty much all my, um, a, a lot of my YouTube videos, I use the Artistico paper, Fabriano. And uh, again, it's a great all-purpose. You can create any type of painting and it's going to look beautiful. You can get some rough look to the to the grain. The grain is a little bit rough, so you can get some really nice uh, of that rough feel with your watercolors. We'll show you how we're going to do that. But just to kind of cover that um, bit of information, this is like my all-purpose. I can do figure painting, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. I can do, you know, um, pets, like you know, dogs, cats, um, any kind of, you know, type thing, birds, anything, like, any type of subject matter, um, really. Artistico will, will handle it for you. It does a great job. Looks beautiful all the time. And it gives you a versatile look to your painting. You're always going to be able to get the effects you kind of want uh, on your paper at any given time, no matter what your subject matter is. So that's really how I find Artistico. It seems to me like a really balanced, beautiful paper that just you can kind of go in there and paint any subject matter and you can kind of get the look you're looking for for the most part. It's going to turn out good for you. So let's start out here and we'll just maybe do two compositions here within this paper. So I'm not going to do large uh, compositions here. Maybe we'll do, we'll split the paper in half here. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to split the paper in half. Good. And um, maybe the first thing we're going to do is uh, up top we'll do it maybe like a tree. So we'll just do maybe like a couple tree forms here. So I'm just going to go up and do a... So I'm just going to kind of do some tree forms here. So I'm doing the trunks of the trees first. I'm just drawing in the pencil lines. I'm, pencil lines. I'm hoping you can see those. This one might be a little more um, of a larger tree, so it's got a wider trunk. A, a more, the diameter of the trunk is a little larger. And this is going to be a little more higher up here, like so. And I'm just doing some of the branches. And I think that looks pretty good. And they're close together here, so they're sort of mixing and mingling together, these two trees. And uh, we'll do a little bit of grass over here. So we're not going to get too involved in a, a whole project here. We're just doing a composition. So let's do this composition. Ha have fun with it. You know, try this out and you'll really have a fun time of it and you'll enjoy it. It's kind of a freeing experience when you're just doing compositions like this. And then what I'll do next is I'm going to take a smaller brush now. So I'll rinse off. I'll get some fresh clean water. So I have fresh clean water in my water pail here. I put that over to the right. And then again, I always talk about technique and methods to watercolor painting, you know. Um, always key to try to keep in mind you'd want to have like a small piece of sponge next to your water container over here to the right. So if you're painting, so if you have your water pail over here to the right like so, then you might have like a sponge next to your um, your water container, or you might have some paper towel or tissue you hold in your hand. This way when you're uh, rinsing off your brush, after you rinse your br brush in the water, you can tap off a little bit of water on a paper towel, or you can use your, your um, sponge, right? So you want to take a little bit of water off first before you go over and get some paint and go into your painting. That's the key. That really will save you so much um, headaches in watercolor if you can just check off a little water off your brush and it'll really help tremendously. So let's get started. Let's do a little bit of some brown and some raw umber. So we'll use brown and raw umber. Maybe a little bit of uh, raw sienna. A little bit of cerulean blue. Like that. So that's going to be our our tree trunks and branches to start with. And again, we're just having some fun. So I'm just going to show you the, the, um, the 
So here you can see we're using the Fabriano and you can get some really beautiful fine lines on the, on the paper without it being a difficult time. Sometimes you'll find papers that are really rough might give you a hard time getting some fine lines like this but here Fabriano you can get some really fine lines on your paper without a problem and that's kind of a real relief when you're painting and we're going to do a little bit of warm and cool so we're going to have some blues and even let's go in with some greens sap green up here let's introduce a little bit of sap green into our our brown and uh, raw umber and raw sienna uh, so we're just getting in some branches okay and that's about what we're looking for there so we have our branches in so we're doing some loose fun trees here we got our we have our um, trunks tree trunks in here we have our branches going pretty nicely and now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and do some of the leaves and the leaf forms. So I'm going to take some sap green and put that up here. Maybe a little bit of uh, chromium of oxide over here, up this way. That will be kind of a dull green. Kind of looks really nice uh, with a mixture of some sap green and even some olive green too. So there's some olive green here. Olive green's a little more warmer, has a little more gold color in it. Sap green's a little cooler, a little more blue and sap green. So let's go in here and let's. So now we're going to do the um, again the the leaves and the uh, leaf forms. So I splash on a little bit first. Maybe even a little bit of um, French ultramarine blue for some shadow areas. Maybe that's a little dark. Let's keep it maybe sap green. Sap green's a little better. Yeah, I like that. Then you can take your finger and do a little finger painting. Tap on a few spots. You get some variation there like that. You can even go in and get some cadmium lemon yellow. Why not? We'll mix that down here. And we'll put that over here. So maybe up here it's a little bit lighter and brighter on the top of the tree. Like that. So if it's lighter with more light and bright up here on the tree, you could add some of that cadmium lemon yellow. Like that. Splash on a couple leaves here and there. Then as you're underneath the shade areas of the tree, like here, you know, you can kind of tap on some finger painting, like so. Leave some white paper. Don't cover the whole paper. You know, it's kind of good to leave some white paper in there. And I think that you have it right there. Not too much overworking it. And I'll do a little more splashing over here for some leaves. Like that, and that is pretty good. Then we can just tie this all together with the uh, ground area, some of the grass, and some chromium of oxide, kind of a dull green, and then we have some blue, maybe for shadows underneath here under the tree, like that, and then some lighter greens here over this way, maybe even some lemon, cadmium, lemon yellow. Okay, so that's our first composition. I hope you enjoyed that. It looks good. I'm sure you're doing a beautiful job at this. And this is what's so fun about it is it's a composition, so there's no stress. We're not painting a large painting or anything like that or doing anything too sophisticated. We're just kind of, you know, really getting a, a basic, you know, composition of working with Fabriano paper, extra white, rough paper. How is it going to look when we paint a tree? So you can paint a beautiful grouping of trees, one tree, whenever you're painting on Fabriano, you can just create this swatch, create this composition, 
get it till it looks pretty good you're, where you're happy with it. You have to be happy with your, your uh, composition that we're doing here. So if you do it the first time and it doesn't look so great, try it again, maybe one or two times, three times. Then at that point, when it comes out really where you're happy with it, then you can take that and you can put it and maybe trim the paper in half and you can paste this or, or tape it onto another sheet of paper and you can say Fabriano extra white rough paper trees composition tree composition and then when you look back if you ever need to if you're creating a painting and you need to do some trees and you're maybe you have some Fabriano paper and you're working with that paper and you're doing a painting with uh, uh, the Fabriano paper you can look back grab your folder open your folder up and say ah there it is that's the composition I did on Fabriano paper with a tree and it looks really nice you get a really good effect you know creating it this way and then you could even make a few notes on your paper too like you might tape this to a larger piece of like printer paper maybe like an you know eight, uh, eight by eleven printer paper and you might make a few notes like you might say the colors you used and you might write down a few of the colors and then you might also you know say I did some finger tapping uh, for leaves so finger tapping for leaves um, you know your colors you know brown burnt umber raw umber um, cerulean blue for your tree trunks with some sap green and then you know you can use your greens and write down what greens you used for your your composition and that's that's it you write down the colors you use maybe and maybe a few of the techniques you used and that's all you have to do and then the next time you create maybe if you're looking to paint some trees in a painting uh, you know six months from now or a year from now you just go back to that folder and you open it up and you say ah there it is I did this these grouping of trees they looked beautiful I did this composition I want to create that same look and then this way there's no starting from scratch again you know thinking to yourself hmm, how am I gonna create these trees in this painting that I'm doing right now you can go back and you have a, a documented history of what you've done before you've saved it and you can go back and look at it and say I'm gonna use this for my reference so then now you'll kick right back into gear and you go oh yeah I remember I did this oh yeah I remember how I did that I remember all the things I did in this swatch in this composition and you just take this and you use it and you put it right into your your next painting that you're gonna do I hope that really helps I think it will so um, I'm sure you're doing a beautiful job at this one and then we're gonna start another one here below let's do a little bit of ocean water and we'll see how Fabriano does with some maybe some coastal ocean uh, waves and things like that so let's try that next but I first want to just take a quick break because we just did this composition here I need to take a quick break and I you know kind of reload my uh, concentration level I need to maybe relax for a few minutes and then we'll come back and we'll start our ocean waves ah you're gonna like this the ocean waves is nothing like being by the ocean and let's do it we're gonna get there we're gonna go to the ocean while we paint right here you don't even have to go there we're gonna paint it and you'll be feeling like you're there okay all right so let me take a break and we'll come right back and we'll do some beautiful ocean waves on Fabriano paper and we'll see what kind of effects we can get okay all right we'll be right back okay we're gonna start back up again let's uh, have some fun here again we're gonna do Fabriano extra white rough paper and we talked about that at the beginning of the video how you can really um, use the qualities of a watercolor paper to um, create beautiful effects and um, once you're working with certain watercolor papers you'll kind of get used to it I'm used to Fabriano a lot I use Fabriano all the time so I'm just gonna keep continue on here let's do another I'm just going to cover over our trees here because this way it won't distract us when we're doing the painting below. So I'm just going to cover that over like that just so it doesn't distract us. And then we'll put this uh, tape here. And then we'll do some, just a little bit of ocean waves. So now, since we're going to do ocean waves, you know, you can always take a ruler and uh, take a ruler and set up the um, the horizon line for the ocean like this okay so I just set up a level line across and if you want to get the level mark exactly perfectly uh, level 
on your paper. All you have to do is just measure up from the bottom of your paper the same measurement on both sides. So like let's say you wanted to start out here and you say, all right, I'm going to make my uh, ocean uh, horizon line like halfway on the paper, actually, or two-thirds, let's say two-thirds on the paper. So then you would just measure up and say, okay, that measures uh, five, uh, six, mil, uh, six centimeters up from the bottom of the paper. You can make a mark there. Then you can come over here and say, okay, I'm going to make a mark here, six centimeters up, make a mark here. Then you could take your ruler and hold your ruler on both the marks on both sides you made. Six centimeters up from the bottom, six centimeters up from the bottom. You make a mark, you make a mark. Then you hold your ruler up to those two marks and you go across like that. And then there you have it. That's your level line. And it's perfect because you've measured up from the bottom the equal distance on both sides. Six centimeters here, six centimeters here. You're making your dash little dash marks up here, take your ruler, set it down on both hash marks, and then go across, and then you have it. Perfect level line. That's your uh, ocean, the distant horizon line of your ocean, and you're really set. Once you have that in, you're fine. So we're going to continue on here. We're going to do some beautiful colors. Let's uh, clean our palette up. When you start a new painting, best off just spritz your palette with some water, fresh water. Take a paper towel. Clean up our palette because really it's really important to keep your palette clean as you work because as you mix more colors all the time, everything gets muddier and muckier looking as you're working. So it's just best off after you work for a while, maybe 20 minutes or whenever you take a break, then you come back and you just clean up the palette a little bit, especially if you're starting a, a brand new painting. We're starting a brand new composition here. So if you start a brand new composition like we're doing here, and you have another one up here, just clean off all the paint you did on the other composition, and now we're starting with all new colors for this one. And I'm going to use the same brush we used before, which is a number four Da Vinci Maestro, um, a Da Vinci travel brush, Kalinsky Sable uh, travel brush. They work beautifully. I use these brushes all the time. So now the first thing we're going to do is let's think to ourselves, okay, let's make some beautiful um, ocean colors, the sea. Let's go with the really beautiful French ultramarine blue here. Okay, so we'll mix on our palette ahead of time. I'll get a piece of paper towel here. Piece of paper towel, I fold it up a little bit and I'll dry, I'll rinse my brush off, dry off a little bit of water on the paper towel off my brush. I don't want to keep putting a wet brush with dripping water everywhere into the palette. It'll make big puddles in your water, uh, in your paints. That's really bad. Uh, you just like just a short time ago, I made a video on how to paint uh, watercolors with your water to paint ratio, and that's all what I talked about. So if you haven't seen that video, oh, you got to go back and look at it. It's really recent. I just did it recently, so you have to go back and check that out. Water uh, to paint ratios. You just type in Chris Petri water to paint ratio. You'll find that video. It's a crucial video for watercolor artists. So I hope you're going to see that video and watch it and really practice those techniques because that's really going to make your paintings look beautiful. So now let's get back in and get some more colors here. So I'm going to put in a little bit of raw sienna. It's nice to have a little bit of warm golden color in your ocean colors, just a little bit. And that's good uh, beach sand color too. So you'll have some beach sand and some of this in the water, and in the sky maybe too. And then um, with French ultramarine blue, let's do uh, sap green too. Look at how beautiful that is, sap green and French ultramarine blue. That is a really incredible combination for ocean water. We can almost just keep simple and just keep it with that. French ultramarine blue, sap green, and I think we can have some beautiful ocean colors. We'll start with a uh, touch of, of burnt sienna. We want warm and cool. We don't just want to go with cool colors. Let's get some of that warm burnt sienna in there. So it's really three colors. Let's go with French ultramarine blue, sap green, beautiful. Those two, oh, unbelievable. Then a little bit of burnt sienna just to get some warmth in that ocean water. And then let's go right in here and start on the ocean horizon line. Good. Looks good. 
beautiful. There we go. Okay, gonna go right on that line there. Perfect. Then I'm not even going to get anything new on my brush. I'm just going to stick with the same I have on my brush and keep going. And leave a little bit of white paper on there, like that. Now, can you see the paper? How, as I, my brush gets drier and I'm using all the paint in my brush, then you start to get some beautiful effects because you, you're using less paint. So you're getting those broken bits of white paper. Then I'll go back in and get a little more paint over here, just so I can kind of keep this played down a little bit on the edges. But already, can you see how beautiful that looks? Just two colors, really. Three colors, but really two. French ultramarine blue, sap green, and a touch of burnt sienna. And look how beautiful that looks for the ocean right there. Wow. Can't go wrong with that. And then a little bit of uh, viridian green here. And some cerulean blue. I'll put that down over here, cerulean blue. So now we're going to start working closer to the, to the beach, to the shoreline. That's when we want to start getting some of our, like this. Doesn't that look great? And that's the ocean and the waves coming in like that. Then you can take a little bit of that blue and green like we used up here and kind of tie it in, add a little bit. Can you see how I do that? I just add in a little bit of that, just a light bit of it, just to kind of tie it all together. So it doesn't look like it's two different bits of ocean. It kind of, you take some of this darker like that and you just kind of blend it in a little bit to the lighter colors over here. And that looks perfect. Good, good. Okay, there we have beautiful ocean effects on Fabriano paper. With Fabriano, you can get that beautiful textured look with some of those like really beautiful white textured look. All you have to do really is just you know, you, you take your paint and you start getting it onto your paper and you just keep using the same paint that's in your brush until your brush is start, starting to get dry and that works out perfect because even though your brush is dry, even though your brush is dry, it starts to make those beautiful broken bits of white paper effect. And that's how you do it. You just let your brush get dry with this, all the paint you mix on there. The first couple brush strokes are thicker paint and then as your brush dries you just keep using your brush as it dries out and the paint keeps leaving your the hairs of your brush and then you get those white ed broken bits of uh, paper that looks kind of like the ocean foam and the waves coming in can you see that isn't that fun that's easy you don't have to worry about it you can get some gorgeous waves and ocean seascapes by just using this this one technique right here the, in the same colors I think these colors are perfect. You can add a little bit of gold. Some, a uh, little bit of gold color there into it. I think it looks more exciting with that little bit of gold in there. And then sure enough, you can take some of that gold, raw sienna and yellow ochre even. Let's do that, raw sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre. And then you load your brush up with it. And then you start doing the same thing, getting those broken edges like that. Just drag your brush like this across the paper. Like that. Then you can get some water on your brush. 
and you can use water and you just smooth in some of the sand color like that right up to the water like that and you can smooth it right on down like that and this is where Fabriano looks so good because you can get those really rough kind of edges and rough looking washes on there really easily like that and then we can even go in and take a little bit of the uh, again the same thing yellow ochre raw sienna and we get to go across the top like this for our horizon line where the sky meets the ocean with that little bit of orangey yellow golden color like that then we could go in and get our we'll do a really very very humble easy sky like that and just blend it together like that and then a little bit of that up top so you can use the ocean colors for the sky above for the very top and then we use, we've used all the same colors that we've used throughout the whole painting as you can see like that and it looks beautiful it's got harmony to it the colors all blend together beautifully. We're, we didn't use, we used very like a limited palette really. We used French ultramarine blue, sap green for the water when we started here with a touch of burnt sienna. And then we used some raw sienna and yellow ochre for the sand. And we also put a little bit of that golden color in the ocean. And then when we went up to do the sky once, everything is 100% dry. Then you go in and get your yellow ochre and uh, raw sienna and do a quick little bit of golden color along the horizon line where the ocean meets the sky and then from there you go up and you use some cerulean blue and then when you get to the top of the sky you can use your you can use your green and uh french ultramarine blue for the uh, top of the sky like that you can even do a little more interesting clouds or you know some interesting formations of clouds and you can blend them like this like that. So I hope you really enjoyed this. We did two paintings, two compositions on Fabriano paper, and I'm going to do in the future more paper. So we're going to cover more papers here. I'm going to cover this up a little bit here where the tape was. Like that. Okay. We'll use. Uh, There we go. So we could fix these up a little bit like that. We could also do a little bit of sky wash over here. Some cerulean blue. Like this. Maybe a little bit of there. Just like that. Maybe if you want to put a little bit of sky wash in there. No fussing around, just splash on some paint, have fun. Right? And we'll lift this up. There we go. Okay, again, have fun with this. Enjoy. It's just watercolor. It's fun. You have to enjoy the journey. It's going to take time to learn it. If you're new, if you've been painting many years, well, then you're just having fun here and painting along with us and maybe learning a few new little tidbits of information. Who knows? But if you're new at watercolor or you've just been painting a couple years, yeah, it's a long journey. It takes years and years to paint well. You know, you have to put in two, three, four, five years 
The more you practice, the better you're going to get. So every hour you put in means you're an hour better. Basically look at it like that. You know, if you paint only an hour once a week on the weekends, you're going to improve. You will get better, but you won't make as much progress. But if you're making like progress where you're practicing your drawing, your pencil drawings like 10 minutes or 15 minutes every day during the week, like on the weekdays, and then on the weekends you paint two, three hours, wow, you're really going to make really a lot of progress. And I know many of you are out there, you're, you're making fantastic progress and I'm really happy for you. And even if you're just painting along for fun and you really don't want to set the world on fire with painting, that's okay too. You can just join along and do some compositions and have a fun time with us. It's not like we're in a competition against each other or anything like that. We're just having fun. So you just do it the way you want to do it. If you want to improve a lot, you practice a little more. If you just want to take it at your own pace and do it the way you want, that's fine too. Don't feel like you're under any pressure. You know, you just do, you have fun and just enjoy it along with us here. We're all together painting on this channel. And I always say, if you um, haven't uh, uh, subscribed before, please hit the subscribe button below on the right hand side. All it does is just means you're going to join us together and you'll always see my new videos in your YouTube channel when you open up your YouTube channel. And I want to thank everybody for leaving comments and all the beautiful comments everybody leaves. Thank you for sending your emails and sending me paintings of what you're doing. Many, many uh, of you are really sending me a lot of beautiful paintings of the work you're doing. It looks great. And uh, a lot of you are making great progress. So I'm really happy for you. So um, again, more of an easy video, an easier, you know, easier tutorial this time. And I'll make a few more of these, uh, you know, around, uh, around uh, this time, maybe of year. I try to kick back a little bit and maybe not do as much... Uh, uh, painting, I take a little bit of a break, so, but I always want to keep active and do some things and, you know, try to work on some compositions and things like that. So I'm, again, glad you're here working along with me and we're having a great time together. So uh, we'll see you on the next video. Always remember, you know, enjoy the journey, have a good time. And um, we're going to create a new video just uh, in a few days or so we're going to have another video coming out so stay tuned we always have new videos coming out and that's why you subscribe on the right hand side below so you'll get our new videos coming out uh, on a consistent basis okay everybody all right so we'll see you very soon